to welcome all that uh, have been impressed in the heart today to join our presentation on the gospel medical missionary work. Well, this is uh, something that uh, has been impressed in my heart. And uh, today I would like us to begin this series of presentation wherein we will uh, different kinds or phases of uh, medical missionary work that God is calling us into in these last days. I will begin by sharing my screen so that we can read together. I believe all of us can see the screen. Well, uh, I'll begin with a prayer and then we continue. We are praying. Father in heaven, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for the opportunity you've granted us that we may learn about gospel medical missionary work. This is a work that you desire each and every church member to understand its every facet so that it can equip us for a character that is fit for eternity. May you be with us, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit and let your blessings be upon us. We pray, trusting, believing through the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Now, to begin with, we know that uh, the gospel medical missionary work is one of the final great work that God is uh, calling his people, his church to engage in. And uh, we are in that time when God is, is in need of workers who are unctioned by the power of the Holy Spirit, who understand their calling, and who are going to ask for wisdom and pray for uh, this feeling of the power of the Holy Spirit in their life, that they can be able to, uh, to influence the life of others. And, uh, Many of us have heard about gospel or medical missionary work, but uh, I believe that there are some facets that we have not really or fully understood and engaged into. And uh, this um, requires us to study into details and also get into it practically so that we can finish the work that God has given unto us. Now, when we read the book of Psalm 67, um, verses two says that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Now, we understand that um, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is the revelation of the character of God, the character of love. And this is going to be manifested in the life of uh, the children of God, practicing what Christ has taught them in their word, in the word of God. It is going to be a practical godliness that is, should be manifested um, unto the world. People want to see the character of Christ. And so the saving health among all nations is to be manifested by the children of God. We know that in Malachi chapter four verses um, two says that he, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. 
Um, in Psalms chapter 77, verses 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? In the sanctuary, we find the model or the pattern that God has given unto us that we may follow in order to reach the perfection that God has called us into. And so the gospel medical missionary work is going to demonstrate the saving health to all the nations, kindred and tongue and people. And this is going to um, make us to follow the way of the Lord, which is going to make us to achieve the perfection of Christian character. Which way is it that uh, we are called into? It is in the way of righteousness is life and in the pathway thereof is no death. Now for us to uh, show the saving health into the world, the righteousness that is needed, it is the righteousness that is to bring life. And we know that Christ himself is our righteousness and is the way, the truth, and the life. And those who are going to follow his footsteps are going to demonstrate the, um, the character that uh, heaven is, uh, is waiting to see. And it is what is going to cast away all darkness, all evil that is demonstrated into the, uh, that is shown in the world. And this way of righteousness, which we are told is, is life. And in the, this pathway, thereof is no death. It is Christ himself who is life, whom we are supposed to demonstrate in, uh, to the world following his character. Therefore, Christ came to show us this way of righteousness. In John 4, 16, he is the way, the truth, and life. And which righteousness is this that is going to be, to be shown? Righteousness is holiness that we read in uh, Mount of Blessing 18, paragraph 1. Uh, 18 paragraph one says, righteousness is holiness, likeness to God, and God is love, First John four verses 16. It is conformity to the law of, of God. And then it says, for all commandments are righteousness, Psalms 119, 172, and love is the fulfilling of the law, Romans 13, 10. Righteousness is love, and love is the light and the life of God. The righteousness of God is embodied in Christ. We receive righteousness by receiving him. So here we find that the righteousness that God is calling us is the right doing that God is calling us into is holiness, it is likeness to God, it is love that is embodied in Christ. In John chapter 8 verses 12, Christ is the light and the light of life. That is what we are supposed to be. So Christ being the true gospel medical missionary, he has given us a way that we need to copy and follow. What is therefore the greatest need of the world? Minister of Healing 143.2 says, the world needs today what it needed 1900 years ago, a revelation of Christ. A great work of reform is demanded and it is only through the grace of Christ that the work of restoration, physical, mental and spiritual can be demonstrated. So the work that God has given us that the world needs is the revelation of the character of God. It is the work of restoration. Acts chapter three, and I think verses uh, 20 
says that Christ will be in heaven until the restitution of all things. The gospel medical missionary work that we are calling to is a work of restoration. It is a work that is going to restore the physical, mental, and spiritual spheres of humanity. Well, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. Now, which uh, principles or which ways did Christ uh, really follow in doing his, his work? Uh, Ministry of Healing 143.3 says, the Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them and then ministered to their needs and won their confidence. And after that, he then bade them to follow him. Now, we must know, uh, dear friends, that uh, this is the only uh, method that we have to follow in order uh, to reach source, in order to give an impact to the lives of men. We must mingle with the people. There must be a personal effort in reaching out unto the people. And when we follow this method of Christ, I assure us that we are going to have an impact that the world has ever uh, as never seen. We are going to demonstrate a lifestyle that people who long to join, that people have never seen since the, uh, the beginning of the world. Now, in PH093, page 39.1, we are told that Christ is the great medical missionary. He came to this world at infinite sacrifice to teach men and women the lessons that will enable them to know God aright. Mark that. He came to teach us uh, lessons that will enable us to know God aright. His character has to be manifested in us. The glory which in Exodus 33, he showed, or 34, he showed unto Moses, which is his character, has to be demonstrated to the world. He lived in this world a perfect life, setting an example that all may safely follow. So this is the method that we have to follow. We have to follow Christ. We are going to look into the Gospels and see uh, the uh, the way of Christ and how it compares to the way uh, how, how it all compares to us who have been called to be gospel medical missionaries. Now we understand that the gospel uh, means the life of Jesus Christ, Romans chapter five verses ten, and it is the power of God unto salvation. And to them that believe, it is the power of God unto salvation that is demonstrated in the righteousness of the children of God. Now, as gospel medical missionaries uh, who are going to restore the health of people, physical, mental, and spiritual, social, and all other facets of life, we must follow the pattern of the great medical missionary. Now, the life of Christ and his ministry to the afflicted are inseparably connected. From the light that has been given me, I know that an intimate relationship should ever exist between the medical missionary work and the gospel ministry. This, the, the healing message and the life of Jesus Christ, the good news, the life of Jesus Christ who came to seek and save the ones who are lost must be intertwined together so that an impact can be seen in the lives of men. They are bound together in sacred union as one work and are never to be divorced. The principles of heaven are to be adopted 
and practiced by those who claim to walk in the Savior's footsteps. By his example, he has shown us that medical missionary work is not to take the place of the preaching of the gospel, but is to be bound up with it. Uh, so um, this work is to be bound up with the, uh, with the I'm sorry, there was uh, someone who came. Uh, now we can continue. Uh, uh, with, the, with the sharing. Now we understand and we find that the gospel, the sharing of the word of God must be intertwined or put together with the healing message. Um, and this is what Christ himself did in order to reach the people. By his example, he has shown us that medical missionary work is not to take the place of the preaching of the gospel, but is to be bound up with it. Christ gave a perfect representation of true godliness by combining um, the work of a, of a physician and a minister ministering to the needs of both body and soul, healing physical disease, and then speaking words that brought peace to the troubled heart. These are the, uh, the way that we need to follow. We must first present the word of God to the people, and then we must restore their, their soul, their physical uh, diseases, and their lack, uh, their physical needs, and then speaks words that bring peace to the troubled heart. Medical missionary work is the pioneer work of the gospel. And in the ministry of the word and in the medical missionary work, the gospel is to be preached and practiced. So through the medical missionary work, the gospel is preached and practiced. It is the practical aspect of the gospel. Um, somewhere in the inspiration, it says it is the wage. It is the pointed part of the gospel, uh, uh, of, of the work of God that opens up uh, the word of God unto the people, or give us a chance uh, to reach unto the hearts of men. Now we are going to compare the life of Jesus Christ and uh, the gospel medical missionary work that we are supposed to, uh, to copy from Christ. In Acts chapter 10 verses 38, we are told how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Number one thing that was so much important in the book of Jesus Christ was the power of the Holy Spirit. He was anointed. He was having the mind of God. And this power gave him an influence uh, and, and, uh, and a power to do good and to deliver all that were oppressed. And he went about doing good. Medical missionary workers have to be going around doing good, willing to be uh, used to sacrifice and willing to give for the cause of God. We have to give ourselves First, we have to sacrifice our life first, and then we have to uh, to minister to the needs of the people. 
Luke 4, 18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now, what side of the gospel medical missionaries are we then to, uh, are we then to follow? Now, look at Ministry of Healing 143, paragraph one. Everywhere, there are hearts crying out for something which they have not. The hearts of men long for a power that will give them mastery over sin. We can only give this power when we have been anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit, I believe that we are following a power that will deliver them from the bondage of evil. Christ received the power and he was able to deliver the oppressed. He was able to set uh, uh, the captives free. We can only set the captives free or those who are in the bondage of evil when we have the power of the Holy Spirit. It continued to say, a power that will give health and life and peace. Look at Christ. Christ came to seek and save that uh, which was lost. And then in John chapter 10, verse 10 says that um, he came to give life and give it more abundantly. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 17, says that he, he came to, uh, to take all our infirmities and diseases. Now, in John chapter 14, verses uh, 27, he gives us peace that surpasses all uh, peace that the world can give. Um, And then, we who are being, who have been called as gospel medical missionaries, we are only if we have the power of the Holy Spirit. It continues to say, many who once knew the power of God, God's word, have dwelt where there is no recognition of God and they long for the divine presence. Just as the time when Christ was here on the, in, in the world, the world needed the world needed the gospel, the world peace, the world needed help. That is what Christ has given us as his medical missionaries to ensure that we give unto the world. Now let's look at another aspect of Jesus Christ. Um, it says in uh, Luke 4, 18, which I've, I've, I've read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. In Isaiah 58, verses 6 and 7, what are we supposed to do that is comparable to what Christ gave? The Bible says, is not this the first that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free? and that you break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the angry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Now, this is what we are supposed to do as gospel medical missionaries. Christ did it. And so he has given us the power to, uh, to also do it, to lose the bands of wickedness, to share the food that we have with the hungry. He is calling us to deliver those who are uh, 
who are uh, having a lack in their lives. We are supposed to give them the basic necessities. We are supposed to house those who are homeless. We are supposed to clothe the naked. All these are the spheres of medical mission and work that God is calling us into. Now, in Desire of Ages 824, paragraph five says, the very essence of the gospel is restoration. And the savior will have us be the sick, the hopeless, and the afflicted take all upon his, his strength. Christ's life was to restore the life of men. Medical missionaries are supposed to, uh, uh, to restore the lives of men. By that, we will be showing the essence of the gospel and people will believe the gospel of God. Now, Christ's method in relieving the demon possessed and in healing the sick, in Matthew 4.24 says, and his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he, he healed them. Now let's compare that to what the gospel medical missionary workers are supposed to do in following the Christ method. Review and Herald, July 29, 1902, paragraph two says, we have come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. The world is a Lazar house filled with the victims of both physical and spiritual disease. And 1911.3 says, men possessed with demons are taking the lives of men, women, and little children. Men have become infatuated with vice and every species of evil prevails. That is the world which we are living in. And it's the same world or condition that was prevailing during the time of Jesus Christ. Demon possession is everywhere. The demon of intemperance, of pride, of injustice, of anger, of jealousy, of evil surmising, of covetousness. People are tied with this evil or vices in their lives. And so God is calling gospel medical missionaries who are consecrated, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to uh, deliver those who are under the bondage of the devil. The world is full of fear where in the diet or the processing industries recommend for us what to eat. All our schools where we go to the nutrition that is taught is not according to the principles of the Bible, that which brings us into a perfect uh, uh, Christian character. Uh, the diet that we have leads us into intemperance, lustful uh, propensities. And then after this, that the world has given us, the world gives us, give us an option of taking the drugs. And then the doctor teach, uh, tells us what to, to do. And so we find that the world is full of diseases. Those who are under uh, lifestyle diseases that have been termed incurable. People are living in fear of their lives. People fear bac uh, bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Um, there's a, uh, like the coronavirus that we have. People live in fear everywhere. And the antibiotics that are given out destroys lives of men. And people end up uh, dying, going to the priceless graves. People fear insects everywhere. We find that there are pesticides, hybridized seeds. People are looking for a better life. 
that is not better indeed, but is leading them to death to, uh, uh, to get diseases that cannot be cured because the world has left the way of the Lord. And so gospel medical missionaries are called to bring hope to men by practicing good agricultural methods, by practicing hygienic organic methods of farming so that health can be restored. People fear viruses, vaccines are everywhere. And this fear is used to control people so that order can be maintained in the society so that and, uh, and philosophies uh, can be instilled in the hearts of men, in the minds of men, so that people can be forced to obey the laws that are against God's will and principles so that uh, positions and power can be maintained. Um, in uh, education, I think page 228 says that there is uh, a centralizing of power where there is uh, enriching of the rich men and the wealthy men at the expense of destroying uh, the, the law in the society, the medium class in the society. So all these are creating fear. People do not know what will be there tomorrow, but the gospel medical missionary workers, God are calling them to give hope. There is no fear in perfect love. And this love is found in doing the commandments of God, living by every principle of the word of God. Gospel medical missionaries must offer something better. What is it? There are not many, even among educators and statesmen, who comprehend the causes that underlie the present state of society. Those who hold the reins of government are not able to solve the problems of moral corruption poverty, opparism, and increasing crime. They are struggling in vain to place business operations on a more secure basis. If men will give heed to the teaching of God's word, they will find a solution of the problems that perplex them. So brothers and sisters, the only solution to the world's problem is the gospel. It is the word of God. It is the life of Jesus Christ lived and practiced in our lives. Now, Christ uh, took the uh, care, take, uh, he took care of the, of the age. Let's see that in John 19 verses 26, he says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples, a disciple standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son, then said he to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that power, that disciple took her unto his own home. This was John the beloved. What principles was, uh, was Christ trying to teach gospel medical missionaries in these last days? Adventist Tom 149, paragraph one, teaches us that those who have the age to provide for, should remember that this especially need warm, comfortable rooms. We are called to provide homes for the aged, to take care of our aged parents and aged women and men in the, in the church. We are called to take care of the homeless, the orphans, the widows, um, and those who cannot uh, find um, basic necessities in the society. That is the scope of the gospel medical missionary work that we are called unto. There is a large field of uh, for missionary labor in caring for homeless, orphan children. Shall not the love of Christ constrain my brethren 
and sisters to use the capital entrusted for the purpose of blessing others in providing for destitute and homeless children, shall Christian uh, uh, Christmas and New Year's find you enriching yourself by accepting gifts that you do not need, or will you tell your friends and relatives that you will regard it as a great favor to yourself if they will bestow their gift on the orphan's home, that needy homeless little children may uh, that needy homeless little children may thus be cared for, clothed, and fed as God will have them. The blessing of the Lord will surely be bestowed upon all who will deny self using the means uh, he has lent them in an economical way in providing for themselves in order that they may provide for those who are destitute and afflicted. God is testing and proving every soul in this probationary time that it may be made manifest whether or not his attributes of character are formed within. God wants us to live a self-sacrificing life. We must think about the homeless. We must think about um, uh, the needy in the society. We, that is why in order to give food to the, uh, to the needy, we are called into the garden medical, mission, uh, garden medical missionary work where we are supposed to set farms in order to feed the society, those who cannot uh, provide or find means to feed themselves. We are able to, we should be able to teach them how to raise their own crops. We are called to do tailoring work or dress, hygienic dressmaking so that we can clothe the, uh, the orphans or the needy in the society. God's work, the final great work that God is calling us into is to practice these principles of Christianity and to the people. Now, Christ visited the sick. In John 5, 4 to 8, uh, remember the man at the pool of Beth, uh, Bethesda who has been there for, for, uh, for 38 years. Now, I've been reading this story uh, yesterday. I really found many uh, lessons that we can learn. You find that people who are having different infirmities were lining in, uh, in this pool so that they can find help. So that when the angel comes and trigger up the water, they can throw themselves into the water and get healing. Now, Christ takes an opportunity to go and visit this person with infirmity. He was there, no one was caring for him. No one was there for him. To, uh, to help him, throw him into the water. This defined the condition of many people who are hopeless in the, um, in the wards of the worldly hospitals. Many people are there who are waiting for their death. They are hopeless. God is calling gospel medical missionaries, all ministers of, of the gospel to visit these people, to give them hope, to give them healing. Who knows that it, is, it was you that God was waiting to go and pray for these people, that should they die, they should die in Christ. Now, Christ raised him from his uh, sickbed, and then this man was delivered. What should we do? Uh, we are say, uh, told that, do you confess Christ by visiting the sick, the needy, and the poor? Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. When the church will not do these aspects of medical missionary work, then we shall have delayed, or we will delay the coming of Jesus Christ. There will be no impact that we can 
uh, that people can see in the life of Christians. And uh, Jesus visited the people in their houses, Matthew 9, 10. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, when the Pharisees saw that Christ sat down with the publicans, they said unto his disciples, why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Christ is calling us to go to the houses of men. Now here where we are, sometimes we visit uh, those who are uh, um, in their homes. You find that some people are sick, some lack food, some are old women uh, who have not eaten for even two or three days and they have uh, grandchildren to feed. When you visit men in their houses, I tell you, you will, uh, you will see the greatest need of men outside here. You will not clothe yourself um, luxuriously. You will not eat luxuriously, but you will spare something for the needy. You will spare something for those who are lacking food. You will spare something for those who are lacking clothes. You find that some people do not even have a comfortable place to sleep. Now, this is the work that God is calling us into. When we visit men and women in their houses, we will know their problem. In the story of Lazarus, he comforted the, the bereaved. In John chapter 11, verses 40, then said Jesus, uh, uh, 11 verses 26 says, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, is dead. When we go to verses 20, it says, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Verses 23 says, Jesus said unto her, when she told Jesus that when you were here, if you were here, my brother will, not, will have not died. Christ told him, thy brother shall rise again. What a hope that he gave unto that family. And what a hope are we supposed to give unto the bereaved? We are supposed to visit those homes whom their loved ones have been uh, have passed on, passed away, to comfort them, to read the word of, of God to them. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. These are what we are supposed to present unto the homes of those who, are, uh, who have lost their loved one. Minister of Healing to 20 to 33.2 uh, says that when we have prayed for the recovery, of whatever the outcome of the case, let us not lose faith in God. If we are called upon to meet bereavement, let us accept the bitter cup remembering that our Father's hand holds it to our lips, but should health be restored, it should not be forgotten that the recipient of healing mercy is placed under renewed obligation to the creator. When the 10 lepers were cleansed, only one returned to find Jesus and give him glory. Let none of us be like the unthinking nine whose hearts were touched by the mercy of God Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We are called to pray with these people, to tell them the hope that is there in Christ, to read the word of God with them, to see that it is 
the will of God. They should not cry as those who are hopeless, but those who should remedy the defects of their lives, that when Christ comes, they should be uh, able to be taken uh, with into the clouds with Christ and his holy angels. And should those who die, died in Christ, they should be given hope that they will meet with them in glory. Now, in the medical missionary work, Ellen G. White had an experience that uh, is penned down in Rivian Herald, July 26, 1906, paragraph 10 says that the Lord gave me great light on health reform. In connection with my husband, I was to be a medical missionary worker. I was to act an example to the church by taking the sick to my home and taking and caring for them. This I have done giving the women and children vigorous treatment. I was also to speak on the subject of Christian temperance as the Lord's appointed worker. I engaged utterly in this work and spoke to large assemblies on temperance in its broadest and truest sense. Who knows that someone will come to you to need uh, to have a place to sleep. Now, if you are a Christian, if you are a gospel medical missionary, even your house, should be a place where people can find comfort. Some people will come to visit you just to find something to eat, or some will come just to find some place to sleep. It reminds me just this evening, uh, a friend of mine has just come to visit me here. In, uh, he's a Samburu, he's a, one of the pastoralist group here. And, uh, He's just requested me that I can offer him a place to sleep this night. So some people will just come to you that they, you may offer them a place to sleep. Some people will come to you just to get water. You should be able to give them water. A Christian, Christian home should be a home where hospitality is practiced. You need to pray to God that he gives you the things that you are able to give unto the people who visits you. People need uh, to be shown the character of God, the character of love in this present world. In closing, uh, what are some of the spheres of the gospel medical missionary work that uh, God is calling us into? Um, this is review and herald, I think so. It says, during the past few years, the beehive in San Francisco has been indeed a busy one. Many lines of Christian effort have been carried forward by our brethren and sisters there. What are the work that they have been doing? These included, vis included visiting the sick and destitute, finding homes for orphans, I tell you today, as a church, or as professed uh, present truth believers, we've not been engaged in finding homes for the orphans and to help them build a character that is fit for eternity and work for the unemployed. Now, the youths today cry of unemployment. What are we doing as medical missionary workers to help the unemployed? Uh, in the spirit of prophecy, we know that there are some practical aspects of the gospel that the youth need to be engaged into. Masonry, carpentry, um, we have tailoring, we have garden missionary work, uh, pro uh, crop production, uh, and many, many other practical aspects that people can help uh, themselves to raise uh, to raise some uh, money that they are able to, uh, to survive on. That is the work of the medical missionary workers. We must work for the unemployed. We must nurse the sick and 
teach the truth from house to house. And the conducting of classes on healthful living and the care of the sick, all these are spheres of the work of gospel medical missionaries. A school for the children has been conducted in the basement of the Laguna Street meeting house. For a time, a working men's home and medical mission as, uh, was maintained on Market Street near the city hall. There were treatment rooms operating as a branch of the St. Helena Sanitarium. So that means we are called to have treatment rooms. In the same locality was a health food store near the center of the city, not far from the coal building was a, conduct, a, con, a conducted a vegetarian cafe, which was open six days in the week and entirely closed on the Sabbath. Along the waterfront ship mission uh, work was carried on at various times our ministers conducted meetings in large halls in the city. Thus the warning message was given by many. I'm thinking that we need to have a medical missionary front where we can do health expos. We can have uh, health seminars or evangel evangelistic campaigns in the cities, in, the, uh, in various areas and I tell us that we are going to attract many people unto the truth. And when we do all these meetings, we can give tracts, we can offer, <coughs> sorry, we can offer some uh, assessment, uh, basic assessment test for the people, looking at their vital signs, um, advising on health principles. There is a great work outside there for medical missionaries. And if medical missionary work has been narrowed down to herbalism, people just want to know what treats this, what treats this, what treats this. No, brothers and sisters, we have to think on a broader scope. Medical missionary work is a, a very complete system of, um, of the work that God has given his church in these last days. Um, so the question is, to the question, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Who will respond here, am I, send me? Men are to be instruments in the hands of God to execute his, his commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The apostles were to commence at Jerusalem for the work should ever begin nearest home. The work has to begin in your household. The, the work has to begin with your wife, if you are married, with your children, if you have children, with your nuclear family, extended family, the society. The work needs to begin in your own home. If you are claiming to be a gospel medical missionary and in your home, people cannot see it. When I visit you, the food you eat, the way you operate during the day, the way you work is not according to the health principles, then you are not qualified to go outside to minister unto the sick or unto the needy. It has to begin in your home or in our houses. Now I want to finish with this quote. We are called to give the third angel's message to the world. And the third angel's message is a practical gospel. Medical missionary work is one aspect of that. The truth for this time, the third angel's message is to be proclaimed with a loud voice, meaning with increased power as we approach the great final test. This test must come to the churches in connection with the true medical missionary work, a work that asks the great physician to dictate and preside 
in all it comprehends. Now the test in the final uh, times is going to come um, in the connection with the true medical missionary work. We know that miracles are going to be done by the professed uh, Christians, evangelicals, but miracles are not going to be a test of a true prophet or a true Christian. But God is going to use a people who will teach the people principles of the word of God, principles of health in the word of God using simple natural remedies so that people can be healed. Showing the people the life of Jesus Christ, raising up the standard when the devil is going to come up with the solutions to the world problems. The screening, the testings, the coming up of new uh, vaccines and, and cancer screening machines, and maybe some drugs. God is calling us to just teach the people the simple laws of health. This is the final test that God is going to give unto the gospel medical missionaries. The present truth for this time comprises the messages, the third angel's message, succeeding the first and second. The presentation of this message will all, uh, with all it embraces is our work. The third angel's message in its clear, def uh, definite terms is to be made the prominent warning all that it comprehends is to be made intelligible to the reasoning minds of today. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message is to prepare our people to stand true to him during the time of investigative judgment. And that is why we establish and maintain our publishing houses, our schools, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories, and we are supposed to carry out the work in this land. Who is there who is ready to give the final great work to the world? Are we willing to work with God? Uh, may God bless us as we think upon uh, this message today and uh, the true gospel medical missionary work that God is calling us unto. Um, I want to end with a prayer before I invite reactions. We can pray. Everlasting Father in heaven, we thank you for the message today. You are calling us to be true gospel medical missionaries. You are calling us to the highest uh, standard of, of, of working that has never been seen before. Help us, Lord to reach unto the people. Give us wisdom, give us means, give us intelligence that this work may close and we can go home. Consecrate us, forgive us where we have not done rightly. Forgive us where we have not taken our duties rightly and bless us always and every day that we may reach unto the hearts of men everywhere in this world. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for blessing us. For this, our humble prayer, trusting, believing through the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus Christ. Amen.